Um, the year was 2019. Megan was on a little bit of a run in the World Cup. Mm. I couldn't go because it was during the WNBA season, even though I was hurt. I couldn't go to the final. So I haven't seen Megan in, at that point, probably like a month and a half. And so I show, I, I fly to France for the final. I get there like the day before the game. So the night before the game is I'm seeing her for the first time in over, maybe more yeah, than like a month months. and a half. Yeah. Because yeah. they, you know, pre -camp they're training, pre-camp. So I go to dinner with some friends because they have meetings and video and film and things. And so I can't see Megan until, let's call it, 8 o'clock that night. So I'm at dinner with friends and we all went around the table. <laughs> there was like seven, eight of us. And the bet was like, is Sue going to get some tonight? <laughs> <laughs> the DraftKings Super Boost. Yeah. Is Sue Bird going like, to get some tonight? Are you guys going to hook up tonight? And I was kind of like, I was, I was a little torn. I was like, I don't know. The, like the girlfriend in me was like, of course. The athlete in me was like, eh, I don't know. We just, you know, we just, we just okay, did well, a hug well, it out. We just well, did a hug it out, you know, <laughs> hug and kiss it out, roll around. <laughs> but, roll, 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 roll around, around a little. Yeah, on top of clothes, dry hump. Yeah, just something just, like that. Just some. Uh, you just said dry hump. Yeah. So let's take some, a moment for that. Just some high high end heavy petting. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I served you guys a drink of your choice at the bar <laughs> of the Metal Arc Media office. And now Megan Rubino and uh, Sue Bird, um, you guys are getting loosened up. Yeah, we're ready. I'm excited too. Hold on. I want to do one thing before I fully loosen up here. Yeah. Sue okay, heard you, it. You heard it too? Sue okay. heard it. Um, it's just that her voice came very faint. Pablo, you're good to okay. go. Cool. Okay. I want to point out, actually, I want to start this way is that Sue Bird is already point guarding this podcast. <laughs> yeah. So Megan, this is kind of a thing I've Welcome realized. to Megan's life. Yeah, yeah, welcome to my life. Right. <laughs> this is, we talk about this all the time because, and, and this is how I say it, there is a very small, irregular tax that I have to pay that allows me to have Sue Bird as the point guard of my life. And this is how, <laughs> this is how it shows up. Sometimes we get to JFK an hour earlier than we want to, which means like probably no, say like in the hour. like thirty to forty five minute hour. range, and but. it's like it's random. It's just it's when irregular. the flight is midday. It's small. I'm like, yeah, who can navigate this? It could take you thirty minutes. It could take you an hour and thirty minutes. Yeah, but who can figure this out? It's so nominal. It's it's just it. But the rest of the time, I get you in that lounge though. Okay, so we'll get back to the Delta Lounge in just a little bit here, but this is the place where I feel kind of compelled to just recap the medallion status, as it were, of Sue Bird and Megan Rapino. Because Sue, first off, was a 13-time WNBA All-Star, and a four-time WNBA champion, and a five-time Olympic gold medalist, and a two-time national champion at the University of Connecticut. Nobody in WNBA history has more assists than Sue Bird. Megan, on the other hand, won two World Cups for the United States, won both the Golden Boot and the Golden Ball, given to the top scorer and the best player, respectively, at the Women's World Cup. And she also won an Olympic gold medal and also the Presidential Medal of Freedom, you know, for the whole uh, fighting for equal pay and equality in general sort of thing. That made Megan the first soccer player to ever receive that award. But the reason that I really wanted to have two of the greatest athletes of all time on the show together just one day before February 14th is simple. This is our Valentine's Day episode. I've invited, um, I, I, as I say, stupidly excited for this, for talk, to talk to you guys. We've hung out, but not with microphones on. Mm -hmm. So thank you for letting me be my favorite version of myself, which is messy and invasive. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> we watched the AFC title game together yeah. with friends. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Mm -hmm. um, but this, I, I do want to get into like, can I, can I ask some blunt questions? Sure. So nice. like, I've been trying to think of a, of a comparison for your relationship in like sports history. Have you guys played that game? <laughs> no, not really. Where no. it's like, okay, so you're already embarrassed by this. So forgive the bluntness. 
Andre Agassi, Steffi Graf, right? Same sports are not quite the same, but you got to be good enough to be into this mm -hmm. conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of relationships have happened, but I would say that they have not been of, of the caliber <laughs> of you two. Sue hates that. <laughs> Here, here's the question. Okay. Is athletic greatness for you guys an aphrodisiac? <laughs> and I mean that. When you guys are contemplating, this is now the person that I'm falling for. Oh no, I'm I'm falling in love with them. Oh no, I'm I'm all of the things. Mm -hmm. Um, how much is actually being good at the sport you guys played? How much did that actually figure into how you felt? I have an answer. Oh yeah, go ahead. That's a good question. Um, it's a part of it, right? And not because of the athletic piece of it. I think like who Megan is, her success on the field is tied back to who she is in a lot of ways. The same way like, I don't know, if somebody were killing it on Wall Street, that would have some sort of sex appeal to it. So I think it's it's, you can't like, I always say it's like, you show up in a room, you can't, you're not checking any of your identities at the door. Like they come with you. Is it the reason? No. But does it like make somebody attractive when they're great at something? Of course. I want to get to the personal aspect of like, also you guys are gay. Yeah. <laughs> so gay. <laughs> Love being gay. We're pretty gay. Yeah. What was coming out like? Looking back, in hindsight, I was definitely always gay, and I wish someone would have just told me when I was like three so then I could have gotten on with it, but nobody did, which it's not really anybody's place. And then I figured out that I was gay in college, and I was like, oh my God, and then the whole world made sense to me. And I feel like the world has sort of like made sense since then, and that really like threw me out of my shell and like gave me like a solid footing to stand on because I just... I was kind of like, things aren't really adding up, like whatever they're saying in the movies. I'm like, I get it. I guess I am just haven't met the right guy. I don't know. This seems weird. Whatever. And then I figured out I was gay, and I was like, okay, this makes sense. And then I think from then, I was like, oh, this is awesome. That's kind of my coming out story. I don't have like a... It's not uh, a cinematic... Yeah, I don't have like a struggle and I feel really fortunate for that. Like my family was pretty accepting. We went through some like early, you know, like, oh, what does this mean? And like, how are people going to treat you? And just like, you know, it's all very uncertain. And then everyone kind of like quickly got over it and it was like, okay. So I don't have that like sort of typical struggle story. I don't think you really do either. No, Not totally, like but like Definitely times are we're only five years apart, but the, oh, the times are very, mm. very, very different. Okay, wait, so so speak to that though, because I guess when you zoom out and you realize uh, gay marriage was illegal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not wild. so and what not so long ago, all mm -hmm. of this is sort of new, but even still yeah. within that five year five frame year, you're saying. Yeah. Um this is the best way to tell it. I, I like vividly remember this. I um, graduated high school in 98. I graduate college in 2002. I would say both those experiences in women's sports, there were gay women around, you know, kind of like prototypical, the gym teacher, that kind of a thing. Um, and it was always like, oh, my God, so and so's gay. Ooh, And we all essentially like gossiped about it. Mm. And then I remember hearing three, four years later, I'm now in the WNBA hearing about other people who went to my high school or other people in college where they're open. And it was like just in that short period of time, it went from gossip, which for me, especially in college, I didn't want to be a part of the gossip. So there was, you know, a girl that I was hooking up with, but like nobody knows that or no. Well, now they do. But like nobody knew that. <laughs> I, w I would have died before I let any of my teammates know that. Like literally, I'm not. How I, that sounds really dramatic, no, so I don't no, want to like, use that word lightly. But I, but I, I literally would have gone to the grave not telling anybody that. How yeah, it was way different? It was just way, way different. different. How much work did that take to yeah, keep it, was a it juggle. among your teammates who you see all the time? A lot of sneaking around, a lot of lying, going to the mall. But, Those that know will laugh at that. But, <laughs> but, <part> of, but <laughs> I'm going to the mall, guys. <laughs> yeah. Sure. What I am what I am laughing at also though is just the presumption that like, but wait a minute, in women's sports, of course like I know you had to be closeted on my own yeah, on the Yukon women's basketball team. Mm, pretty much. It's not that by the way, it's it's like I'm trying to think now. Was anybody gay? Like my senior year, was anybody openly gay? No. 
which speaks, on my team. Which again speaks to just the crazy amount of societal development. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That Quick, just in five years. Yeah. It happened really quickly. Yeah. yeah. Really and quickly. I think it depends on, you know, where you are. I went to school in Portland and there was already people, you know, like on my visit that nobody was really talking about gay, but I was like, well, this feels different. Like, what what are these what are these ladies? Like, this is obviously very different. They're drinking out of Nalgene's and <laughs> driving X Terras. Looking gay, you know, but the like in a different a way. Yeah, oh, as X Terra. Yeah, the yellow one. Yeah. The yellow um, one. But no, it was very different. I mean, to your to your point about your experience, though, it was kind of like everyone was kind of doing this low key closeted thing. Mm-hmm. So like nobody was gonna poke too much. Nobody yeah, was nah. gonna ask too many questions because that's coming right back to you. Mm-hmm. So I feel like you guys all kind of had like an under understanding, like different to men's sports still. That's like I feel like these men, because they're obviously out there, feel like a they're the only, only, only one. And, like, they can't, nobody can find out. Whereas I feel like you guys kind of knew, like, other people kind of were because you were obviously looking up with someone. But, like, it was just sort of, like, low-key. But also it was, like, already in the world. I was too focused world. on sneaking around to care about yeah. anything they were doing anyway. Like, I was way more worried about if they were going to, quote-unquote, catch me than thinking about where they were sneaking off to. <laughs> that's yeah. another part of it. Yeah, true. You know? Yeah. So that's college. Yeah, that's college. Then I get into, you know, the WNBA. I'm professional now. It takes um, probably by my second year in the WNBA, I'm now like comfortable and confident in my sexuality. And I'm now telling friends, telling family uh, for the most part, like zero issues. There was a couple like, why didn't you tell me sooner? Not about you. (laughs) (laughs) Fast forward. Not about you. Quickest way to tell you. Not about you. Um. But then there is the public coming out that didn't happen until I was 37, which is crazy. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so explain that strategy. As yeah, it's not strategy. It, okay. Well, all the strategic things we've been discussing, right. there was so zero what, thought about this. What was it? In terms of the public part, I think I was just caught in an old mentality of, um, like I said, keeping it private, but also this like marketing thing. Okay, like so- people aren't going to like you if you're gay. So how did uh, how did the straight gaze G A Z got it yeah 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 <laughs> but but the, I was like ooh straight gaze who are they yeah. but how did that figure in like the idea that like wait a minute there there are some like mm-hmm. there are some uh, some dudes who like who think I'm hot or mm-hmm. they wanna they're a fan of me or whatever it is I don't know mm-hmm. what your presumption would have been it was basically told to me that the only way I was going to have success from a marketing standpoint is to really sell this, like, straight girl next door. You have, quote, unquote, the look. So these were things that were told to me. And at 21, I was afraid of, like, all of it. And I openly admit this. It's like, the way I feel now about all of those conversations, I have opinions, I have thoughts, I I have no problem talking about them publicly. At 21, I was afraid. I don't want to give away all my secrets, but... I'm pretty normal. People probably think that there's some uh, crazy story behind the basketball player, but there's really not. I am Sue Bird. Take one. And now you're telling me that my career might not take off? If So I just had it in me that this wasn't something I would share publicly, even though I was living my life that way. And as far as like the male gaze, G-A-Z goes, I mean, I was aware of it. And I think you could even go back in some of my interviews and I, I might even have said, in fact, I know I did, things like, well, yeah, like sex does sell and it's but if they if we get people into the arena, then they'll appreciate the game. I mean, vomit. It's like but I was I was scared. I mean, I, like that's just the truth of it. And this is what I'm being told. I knew what I felt, but that wasn't enough to override what I was being told. Whereas like now that feels different. And actually, a lot of times I get asked like, you know, like, how do you speak publicly about these things now or why? And it's like because I missed 20 years of doing it. Mm. I like, you know, I'm not a 20, but like 15 years, I didn't say shit. I knew what I felt it. I could see it, but I was quiet because I was scared. And it's like enough of that. Yeah. How much can you both laugh now oh. at what the marketing used to be? Well, way worse for me than you. Lucky. Yeah. You're so lucky you figured yeah. it out early. 
Yeah, way, way worse for you guys. Um, and you Mine have are a, comical. You though. guys have a lot more comical. intersection of like race and sexuality mm-hmm. and what all that means and how you guys were marketed. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we we had that too, but we were like, you know, the pretty white girls next door. And you guys obviously have a lot of black women and there's just like a lot of racism and um, mm-hmm. a lot of homophobia and and so many of the things. I mean, I think we can, yeah, look back now and be like, okay, it is so much better, but it's still, it's there. still there. Oh, the, the, the question of like, how do we sell this game uh, to yeah. the, the target demographic that we think we need? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think even just in, in men's sports, like if you're good in men's sports, then you're the one that like gets the endorsements like it doesn't matter really what you look like like if you are you know sort of societally attractive that's like a plus but yeah the archetype from the movie yeah like if you're not it's also fine but if you're amazing as a woman and you're not like quote unquote pretty by whatever that means like it does hurt you and if you are pretty by whatever that means you're like turbo boosted Mm -hmm. as a woman. Like we just, we still know that. And that is like still happening. So I think this, this conversation for that reason is still like really important. I think it's a, it's way more open. Um, There's way more space for players to be themselves at such a younger age. Like I see it with, you know, my, I was just going to call my teammates or my old teammates (laughs) now and like younger players and just having those conversations way earlier and way more space. But it still very much exists. And then obviously in men's sports, I mean, there's there's no gay players. So I mean, like what? They're what do you mean? There. No, They're obviously there. What? So, no, you know, that is still like we're still deeply. It is a in crazy the statistic. It's crazy. <laughs> right. It's the like, guys. It's we crazy. don't believe you that there's no, no, nobody here. I know. And it's like. You're going to, yeah, like, it's, I mean, it's hard. I feel for them. Obviously, no, it, there's so yeah. much fear. But so it, proves, it, so proves, much fear. it proves the point about how young this history is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. you got, truly, like, you guys are, have lived it. Yeah. You just, you just retired, and the people who are still dealing with it have not figured it out yet either. Mm-hmm. And that turbo boost marketing thing, um, I want to go back to that just because Sue is cringing inside of her own, like, existence at, like, what? What did that? What do? What (laughs) as a traditionally pretty person? As a as a traditionally pretty person. Yeah. How would you for people who aren't familiar with Mm -hmm. the marketing campaigns? Mm -hmm. And I did, of course, my research, Mm -hmm. and I saw like the seventy sixers jersey with the. You got to explain this though for people who are not seeing this. Oh, wait! I I have to explain it. Yeah, it's a jersey dress. There's a couple pictures from one photo shoot. It was Dime Magazine, and they were, like, racier at the time anyways. Like, even some of the photos they did when they covered um, male basketball players were a little on the racier side or edgier side. So that's, like, kind of what they were doing. I had to say no to, like, three other poses. This is the stuff wow. that you permitted. There is more this that was crossed like the line. The, yeah. Wow. I didn't like, know one that. of them I had, I didn't, I, they wanted me to not have a shirt on at all. And like cover myself in different ways. I mean, it's different with the ESPN body issue because I felt like older and it was a choice and all these things. This felt, this didn't feel that way. Like just to give it a little bit of a contrast. There's like space for being sexy or having sex sell. I I, I hope that that the takeaway from this conversation is not those prudes. Yeah, no. (laughs) Pretty sure that's not it. But to your point. It's supposed to be authentic. I think that's the better way of saying it. it. Exactly. The theatricality of this is what it means to be. I was like, and that's, and this particular, I'll never, I I vividly remember the day. I was solo. So my agent wasn't with me. So this was on me. And I just described myself at whatever, at this point, I'm probably 22. I just described myself during this era, like, I had to say no, which took yeah. a lot. Oh, so no hard. wonder those other pictures, quote unquote, went through, if you will. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, what? No way. Yeah. <laughs> and just the pressure of being told as, this is you know, one work. of the young stars of the league totally. of like, this is the, A, the only way that you're going to get marketed. Mm-hmm. So you can either be here or not, I guess. But like, this is the way that we're going to sell the league. And like, do you want to help the league grow? Or mm-hmm. do you not? And it's like, that's an impossible situation. Mm-hmm. 
I want to get to though um, the the ways in which the positions that you play athletically um, sort of are obvious in your personal dynamic. So like Sue Bird point guard. So I want to let's I want to establish people who don't know your your works, right? Like okay. Sue is the point guard. Sue's superpower is somehow that she is attending to the people around her mm -hmm. and making them better. But that also means that she's hyper focused on like what they could use. Mm -hmm. Um and I was looking, I was actually looking uh, on Wikipedia for, because I'm a journalist. Obviously. <laughs> There's a, just a funny thing um, that Wikipedia used for Megan, where it was, and I'll just read it. Rapino is internationally known for her crafty style of play and her activism off the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> and I, okay, leave activism aside for a second, though. But like, what does it mean to be, um, yeah, one of the craftiest soccer players in sports history and also um somebody who is a leader of of a soccer team in a way that is inherently different um from a basketball team um what would you say Su megan's superpower is or was on the pitch um her fearlessness like risk taker whether you know the president of the united states is tweeting at her or she's lining up for a penalty kick to win a world cup she doesn't think about what's going to happen next if fill in the blank if she misses or if she doesn't think about that she's fearless in those moments um the craftiness i think speaks to the entertainment in which you played with but the fearlessness for me is what that's like that's who you are as a soccer player i always joke that sue would have hated me as a teammate because probably <laughs> i think the like craftiness and you would have loved me i would have loved you oh my god no you would have you would have been like what is she doing oh my god it worked one out of five times <laughs> um, like you were always, I mean, I think by nature of your position, cause you're the point guard, you always had a lot of responsibility. You were always charged with like literally calling the play and doing the things. I mean, I think I am a risk taker just in general. And I was that way. And I had coaches when I was younger that was like, yeah, do that, do that crazy thing. And that was like cultivated. But I think also my time early on the national team, I was never, I mean, honestly, even until well into my 30s, I wasn't that leader. I wasn't the, you know, the captain of the team. I was only captain of the team for a very short time. Mm. I wasn't the biggest player. I just got to be this really complimentary piece that like, I'm going to do wild shit sometimes and it's going to go bad. It's going <laughs> to go really bad. But there's also that that part that I kind of had that leash and I think I earned that leash you know, over time to be creative. OK, but let's put this in the basketball context. Mm -hmm. There is the equivalent of Megan on your team. How yeah, are you managing nice. this person who is going to turn the ball over, but also give the greatest highlight that you saw that month? Well, by the way, you're, you're toe tapping on a discussion slash argument that we have around just our sports Ooh. and which lens to risk taking. But we can get to that in another pod. Um, <laughs> Wait, I want to know a little bit more about the argument that you walked into this room having. Yeah. No, no, not argument, just conversation <laughs> around. So I think soccer, it lends to risk taking because you because you have to take risk. Mm -hmm. Because there's so few goals. Yeah. yeah. And you're not the, the penalty for the risk is not as great as basketball. You can't be as risky as you can in soccer, in my yeah. opinion, in basketball. No, I agree. There, there, it does require more, so more risk different and there's mentality. less precision because we're using our feet. But what you're implying there is that in basketball, it's harder to be a Megan. Oh, yes. Yes, I am. It is harder. Yeah, because you the reward has to be so great on the other side if you're going to be the leash is shorter. Megan. Yeah, for a Megan. Yeah, yeah. but there's a basketball. place for it. If there were five of me on the court, we it wouldn't be a good team. It'd be a little bit boring. It'd be um, a little bit like there wouldn't be as much risk. I take risk when I have to, but I'm way more calculated. You need the mixture. We'll bring it into the relationship context. <laughs> Something goes wrong. How is you? as the self-appointed, or in this case, um, long authorized leader of this team. And is that okay to say that? That she's the, le I don't oh, know, yeah. do you brisk, okay. <laughs> the leader of our team? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you want to be leading your team? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. I, you know, I'm, yeah, you know, you're the leader of our team. Okay, but something goes wrong and the leader of your team is handling that how? What have you done, Megan? What have you done in this hypothetical or real example from life? 
I'm working on this, but sometimes it's Megan. Yeah. Which is so bad. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, I know. But I don't like it when you talk to me like that. <laughs> I'm an adult. We're working on it. No, we're working on it. Yeah. Um, I think it depends on what it no, is. No, I think you put so much like thought and care and like you think ahead so much. I, I am definitely more like off the cuff, which has its obviously positives and negatives. But and I think we do a, a pretty good job of of balancing that like in our life. But yeah, sometimes I mean, I say this all the time, like it's annoying being me. I annoy myself. <laughs> I'm like, it's it's not all funny games over here. You know, when you do the same dumb thing that you just did, like, why didn't I think ahead to, you know, we'll do whatever. What's what's on what, what's a thing, though? So I can I can potentially I relate because I'm not the leader of my household. Um, my wife is definitely the Sue Bird of our relationship. Um, and I do stuff all the time, like come home 15 minutes to an hour later than I said I would um, or uh, make noise when she's sleeping because she has to get up oh. early. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Sue's a mouse. A I'm mouse. like a rhino. <laughs> Oh I'm told God. that I snore, which was a tough uh, thing for me to have to reckon with. But yeah. Oh, that's we not don't your really fault. That, yeah. That's yeah, what that's I said. Fault, yeah. That's not a choice. No. Thank Sometimes you, you do because you broke in your nose so many yeah. times. But I just give you a little I elbow. Heavy breathe. I just give you a little shake or push and then you'd like move around. I think like one of the things recently that we've been um, talking about, I'm trying to get better as I. Where is this going? I think I like get just kind of in. Honestly, we spend a lot of time together, especially now that we're both retired. So like our days are kind of around each other all the time. But we are sort of like uh, right. working at the same time and there's a lot going on. And so if it's not writ if I haven't like written it down and it's in my calendar, I mean, it's in the ether. Like uh, it's uh, I'm working on it, but it's just it's not getting in there. You're really going there. I was just going to say you don't turn the lights off. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't turn the lights off either. But one thing is That's like. That's one where I'm like. Just yeah. Turn the lights I know. Off I'm like, I house. walk out. And how am I supposed to know when the it's... lights on behind me? You know, because I've already walked out. So that we've gotten over <laughs> that one. That's because that cool, I just turned them off now. Yeah. Because all the bulbs are burned out. <laughs> um, <laughs> but this one is like I I ask her a lot. And this is like a dependency thing, too, where I like ask her you know, either like what she has going on that day or if we have any like plans for the night or what we're doing and like she'll tell me and then, you know, inevitably like an hour later or the next day I'll like ask again and she's like, you know, it feels like I'm not paying attention and like not listening. Yeah, so then I've been it's accused like, of this. Damn, and I know it too. I'm like, but then I'm like, well, I don't have your whole schedule in my head and, you know, but I'm I'm trying to slow down a little bit and... Be more thoughtful. Yeah. You know, I'm never going to be like as thoughtful as you. Well, I in mean, this in this category, you can just hold so much in your head at the same time. It's amazing. Like your ability to hold all these things in your head is is like nothing I've ever seen. And I aspire to it, but I, I don't think I'm going to get there. I, I am getting the sense, too, that when there is conflict, it's not <laughs> Megan, even in like the descriptions of how you are immediately apologetic or like Ooh. immediately like <laughs> are we going there <laughs> yeah okay so what is that because that's a type of person that it's is annoying is okay what it is. yeah it's annoying why is it annoying because on 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 one level to immediately be like hand up is 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 some element of what you want isn't it so, yeah if it's the hand up about the same thing all the time it's like, well, okay, the hand up is really not enough now. You need to actually change the behavior. And I'm like, okay, I'm trying. Oh, it's like, it's actually less that for Or it me. feels like I'm trying to shut you down. Yes. Mm. So, again, back to a sports analogy because here we are. Yep. When, is this a sports show? In, apparently. In my experience, when I go up to a ref and I'm like, what the? Like, what? Like, how'd you miss that? And they go, yeah, you're right. I'm like, okay, thank you. And you have to just walk away. <laughs> There's no longer this, you know? Right. So when, when your partner, after you've maybe expressed something, is just like, yep, you're right, my bad. You're like, wait a minute, is that real? Are you just shutting me up? Mm. And that's where, we've actually talked about that a lot, though, in, in our time. So, okay. So wait, this is, I, I, I'm learning about myself, too, I should say, while I'm asking you deeply invasive questions. Yeah. But like what you're saying is that you're not getting the pushback that would reflect the authenticity 
of what you are actually feeling, that you're trying to keep it moving versus like actually engage on the thing that clearly you are not willing to engage with me about. Well, I just feel like, let's say it was a choice she made or a decision to do something. You probably did that for a reason. And then you're just going to like let go of that reason in the moment that Mm. I bring it up to avoid the conflict or whatever. It's a real point guard mentality, though. You made this decision for a reason. (laughs) What was it and why aren't you telling me? (laughs) I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. I just, I didn't mean it. No, but I will say she also is very open to way more than me in some ways, like way open to like critique or not that I'm criticizing you. It's not that. It's really just like presenting. I'm presenting how it made me feel. That's really what we're talking about. We're talking about feelings. Yes. Here, guys. Yeah. Yes. No, we are talking about feelings. This is a show about feelings. Yeah. yeah. Sports and feelings. That's right. <laughs> Um, there's this term uh, that I've I've sort of marveled at as it has become blindingly obvious in retrospect, but also a cliche, uh, which is love languages. Mm-hmm. What are you guys' love languages? As well, in the thing that you oh do no, we to express. Okay. We talk about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> like which ones are we saying? They, they just have their um, limits. I think. I think. No, no, no. They're all of. I feel like you're. Everyone's yeah, all of everyone's them. All it's all just of them, some are more prominent. Yeah. Yeah. I would say I'm more like acts of service. Yeah, I think acts of service is like where mine shows the most. Yeah. Both receiving and giving probably. Mm -hmm. Mine's definitely more like physical touch, maybe gift giving. Yeah, I think physical touch. Oh, you're definitely physical touch. I would say words of affirmation. Yeah, Yeah, words of affirmation. Yeah. Yeah, giving and receiving. But different there, huh? Mm. Yeah, I'm yeah. just keeping. You can see where we run into yeah. some issues. Yeah. <laughs> just writing down some yeah. of this for my files. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's we like, we were, I run your whole life and our whole life together, <laughs> and I'm like, hey, just tell me that you love me. <laughs> You're like, I did. I did because I just ran your life. Yeah, I love you. because I just I'm running got your you life. Onto this plane yeah. on time. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. We're in the yeah, Delta but... Lounge chilling. I love you. No, yeah, totally. <laughs> we'll be we'll be like in a random. My, my love language is the Delta Lounge. <laughs> No, truly. Yeah. Yeah, those are it. What is easier about dating someone who did roughly the profession mm-hmm. that you yourself devoted your life to for so long mm-hmm. versus, you know, uh, generally and also specifically speaking, like, I don't know, civilians, <laughs> normies. Regulars. Regu- regular. Narps. Muggles. Narps. Yeah. Narps. Normal ass regular, regular person. person. <laughs> Narp, <laughs> as as the as the ambassador from the nation of Narps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is it? What is it about that that actually made this all easier than it might otherwise be? I think our general disposition and the way that we interacted with our sport was a big part of it. I think we both always enjoyed getting away from our sport, um, doing other things in our regular life allowed for our relationship to grow and i think you know if you don't have that and you're you're just sort of like all focused on that that would be a little bit harder um and then i think it's just uh, like you just get it you get yeah that's where i would go just like someone who got what it meant to have a physical spiritual emotional commitment to sports yeah it's like a shared language yeah just like that understanding of what the other is going through, even though it's different sports, different lifestyles in some ways, um, you get to skip the explaining part. It's nice to have somebody that can that understands that right out the right out the gate. We have to be away. We're we mm. never really were like so sad or upset about like being away from each other because we're just like, well, obviously, like your team is here. <laughs> My team is here. I'm, you know, ha- at camp. You're in game. Like, if just... anything, it was harder when one of us came back. <laughs> I was like, oh, you're in my living space again. Yeah. What's this? <laughs> that was hard for you. <laughs> That's hard. For yeah. Me. <laughs> I'm like, that was like, not... oh, the lights are on again. Yeah. All, here we all go. The, all this yeah. physical touch. <laughs> the re entry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When I think about how you guys handled uh, the spotlight, how you handled like a microphone, I don't consider you guys following the same playbook. No, 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 we're very different. We're very different people. Very different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how much of that was a thing you ever needed to 
discuss or or because I, I would like you guys to describe yourselves and your approaches actually okay megan pretty famously um I, I would say uh pretty much gave negative f**ks actually like just yeah, didn't mostly. well yeah <laughs> just i didn't give the f**ks to the sort of obvious people who you're supposed to give f**k to i guess i don't know championship or bust completely yeah championship or bust um, so always i'm excited about um going to the white house <laughs> i'm not going to the white house <laughs> No, I'm not going to the White House. That's okay. We're not going to be invited. You're not going to be invited? I doubt it. Fuck distribution was something that you handled differently from Sue, is the bottom line. Yeah, no, we have a way, 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 way different style. I give all the fucks. But okay, but, but you guys have given your respective press conferences, and there is a different amount of fallout, depending on what the thing was discussed that day. Mm -hmm. And then you guys meet up at home. And it's like, so... <laughs> How did your day go? And it's like, <laughs> well, um, I'm an enemy of the state now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The example I was going to give was after, you know, Trump tweeted at, at Megan and it's at the World Cup and all the things. Um, it was like a couple of days later. And, you know, like we were starting to hear things about what and who was contacting her family, who's, mm. who was in Northern California. Um, my sister, <laughs> so amazing, infamously got a text like anonymous text that was like, tell your sister's boyfriend, Macaulay Culkin, to shut his damn mouth. It's like <laughs> top five. It's top. It's so it good. might be top. It's so good. It might be top. But when I when I started Funner. hearing all these things, Funner. like I said, what her family's getting, Ooh. now my sister's getting a text. I I um call her up. She's in France and I'm like, hey, like, you know, how are you feeling around like safety and and all these things? Like thinking kind of like not globally, but Zoomed out. Yeah. And she's like, I feel safe. I think over time, I've tried to be more thoughtful about it because it, it it has impacted people. It has impacted my family. And, you know, I'm from a small conservative town that's like pretty tight knit. My mom worked at a restaurant. So it was constantly people coming in and out. And my, you know, just my family like lives in a place that doesn't that didn't really agree generally with what I was saying, didn't agree with kneeling. Like, why are you not kneeling? And I don't mean kneeling in, in terms of kneeling. Like, what are you doing? What is everyone doing to help? Because everyone knows that we have a problem in this country. Everyone knows that we have serious issues to talk around racial injustice. You know, didn't agree with my comments about not going to the White House or about that administration at the time. What is your message to the president? I think that I would say that your message is excluding people. Um, you're excluding me. You're excluding people that look like me. You're excluding people of color. You're excluding, you know, Americans that um, that maybe support you. I'm also like, you know, rich and an athlete and privileged and like sheltered in privilege in that sort of way. And so I just didn't really ever feel like I was actually in danger. And I, I talk about this all the time. And you've like seen this in real life. And you weren't there for the one time that this happened. One time oh, in yeah. real life, someone has come up to me. This man said, like, I'm I wish you would have represented our country differently. And I was like, oh, OK. Like, I, you know, sorry you feel that way or disagree. That's the literally the only time. And so, like a couple of times I've been like booed in the stands, but that I don't feel it like counts. <laughs> Even with social media, I feel like maybe because I came to it a little bit later. But I think also my experience with kneeling like immediately showed me that it was all fake. They, they just, what do you mean? Fake meaning like the it was so the conversation that was being had in a negative way was so disingenuous because it wasn't about what Colin was saying at all. Like uh, we're, we're talking about the, the like the military now. Like we're not talking about national security. We're talking about the right to protest and the First Amendment and police brutality and like all of these things. So I just immediately I was like, OK, you're just trying to like have a different conversation and one that slings mud at Colin and, you know, tries to discredit what he's saying. And I think from my perspective, I was like, well, I believe Colin and I believe black people generally. Otherwise, you have to accuse like the entirety of like their experience. Of you have, lying to, you have about... to accuse them of lying, which is insane because we've all seen all of the things. So I think just then I was like, oh, this is just disingenuous in general, particularly on social media. And I'm not getting that real life feedback 
that anybody actually feels this, this strongly about it to ever come in. I'm out on these streets or at nope. games or <clears throat> in Texas or Florida or, you know, places that are traditionally more conservative. Nothing. Not one word. So I was just like, man, this is like whatever. So I'm just going to keep saying what I'm saying. And it seems like I like know when I'm on track when, you know, that part of the Internet starts like saying crazy things. I'm like, oh, thank you for the reinforcement and like acknowledgement that I'm at the heart of it. What's Sue Bird like playing a board game? We don't play games. I know. Uh, Megan doesn't play games. Honestly, it's I, honestly the, I, it's, it's, it's so annoying. I might leave you because of it. I know. <laughs> I, I'm not a gamer. Um, she won't play games with me, Pablo. But I didn't grow up <laughs> playing a lot. I mean, I play, I've played some board games, but I mean, I think you're, you are competitive. You are very oh, yeah, competitive, very competitive, but not so much we're going to like, you know, ruin the night. No, 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 no. I'm actually... I love yeah. playing games. You're I chill. grew up with card games. My family's big card playing family. Board games, did them all. Um, and this this answer was different. Even at like 22, then I would have been like, you know, almost like sore loser vibes. I think at some point, let's call it mid-20s, I was just like, who cares? Who cares if you win at Monopoly? <laughs> like, move on, you know? Um, so now when I play games, I don't get super super competitive and i wouldn't be that way yeah, with you, but she just doesn't like it i know I i've tried just, to teach mm. her backgammon spades like name it you're just not in you're not into it i know you would win though the answer is she would win so now i'm just like <laughs> on my phone playing you know computer number but, two but i but i like <laughs> you are playing bots actually you're yeah, playing the computer yeah. it's telling me it's real people but i'm convinced it's not <laughs> they always get the good role in backgammon i'm like this is impossible True. i want sixes again I want to be mindful of the way in which we have created these two sitcom characters um, in a way that I feel like cannot possibly fully represent Megan as a competitive entity. Because so far, you're kind of like, whatever, man. And I just wonder if for Sue, how, how does that competitiveness actually appear in real life? Okay, good question. Or um, does it? Or Or am I looking for... A, an aspect here that actually you mean outside of sports or or because it exists obviously it exists however you experienced it right like when you were like yeah. oh this person can be both um you know unlike me in in some now documented ways but also <laughs> like a f-ing killer no you're not that competitive in other ways i'm really trying to think i think on the f- like in the game like i know how to be competitive but i think there's some parts about being competitive and being like a killer like that that are really uncomfortable and like make me kind of like insecure and so i think i actually like shy away from Mm. games or like i mean i don't know how to play a lot of the games that's a part of it that's a little bit of of like trying to teach my mom how to use an iphone at some point (laughs) she's just out yeah like she just can't (laughs) even sometimes like in my in my career i would just be like this is like a lot for practice and like uh, i just oh, uh, it's too much like even I just, in practice you guys never said that. you guys do it not all the time and i'm like lenny loophole i'm like how can i win this drill yeah they didn't say you couldn't do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i'm like is that what we're trying to do is that the point of the drill like i would get annoyed when people would do that but I would also get annoyed when the coaches like left big holes in the game where I'm like, well, this is what people are going to do. <laughs> this is the loophole. So, but yeah, I think there's something about like being like uber competitive that is uncomfortable for me that I don't like that much. We've been talking about um, what it was like when you guys were uh, playing sports. I don't want to do the full retirement deep dive because I feel like we can catch people up to the point at which um, I'm just curious how you guys mutually decided to, I don't know, was there a, to strategize? Like, it's just remarkable that you guys both retire within a very short time span of each other. Um, Again, in this way, at the top of your respective sports, when it comes to just these people that many consider some of the best to have ever done it. Um, And you guys go about it in different ways, but also I I, I can imagine that you guys also kind of had a meeting of the minds about this or no? Like, yes and no. The timing is totally coincidental in that 
it was the right timing for me and it was the right timing for Megan, like on our own time, like 100 percent. That has nothing to do that. The, for those that don't know, we retired one year apart. That was not a strategy. That wasn't that was just not a vacation. You guys were dying to get to no, like, eh, no, better get this done now. But I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, because I retired first and I had this experience, Megan definitely had a front row seat to that and got to pull from it and learn from it. Whereas, whereas I got to pull and learn from other people yes. who had retired in the past. Um, so that's, I feel like that's really the main way in which our retirements interacted. Yeah. And I think just the, the processing together through your retirement mm-hmm. just inevitably brought up questions and we were both, you know, talking about it. And, you know, there was questions whether you were going to retire in um, 2021 and mm-hmm. that didn't feel right. And so we were having all these conversations and announcing you know, it while you're still playing versus just kind of <laughs> finishing the season and saying goodbye. That was like mm-hmm. that's probably the main one. I think once the retirement question got answered for both of us in our own way, in our own time, that's the question that I would venture to say every athlete of a certain status in their sport, that's the one you you toy with the most. Yeah. Are you going to do, do it? Especially yeah. if you're in a like a in a league. Yeah. It's the it's the well, league because now you're in a season. And mm-hmm. it's also and this is like, uh, you know, it reminds me of like uh, when I got married, it was like, this isn't also just about you. <laughs> yeah. So like, I had to learn that. It's or for, that. but okay, so who is it for then, as as you would explain it now, having gone through it? So I didn't, th- I didn't think of it, I didn't, I never realized that it was also for the fans. Powerful, powerful moment. <laughs> Sue Bird, the most accomplished champion. In terms of announcing it while you're still playing, I never, that didn't get put into the equation until I talked to uh, CeCe Sabathia and listened to his story. He was like, and he's so, I mean, if anyone's ever spent time with him, oh, he was great. like, yeah, he's like, no, you got to like announce it and let the fans like celebrate you. And I was like, what? And then I thought about it, I was like, oh my God, that makes a lot of sense. And then I found that it was really important for me to have that experience too. Like closure in a way. Yeah. Once you allow yourself to admit, I love, again, I love that. One of my favorite things about both of you is that you are like these, you're alien in the sense that you are uh, representing also a normal point of view of like, um, you're not taking for granted. Of course, the queen must meet her public. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, yeah, the, the, the yeah, double wait. kiss. <laughs> yeah. Once you sort of let yourself fully internalize that, oh, people are out there who sincerely mm-hmm. want this for themselves. Um, it changes the math. Uh, and so I think of your retirement as super well choreographed in that regard. Oh. Um, in that like, wow, a pro who strategized, considered various outcomes and so forth. Just like how it all played out. I didn't expect any of it, except Seattle. That I expect, I knew, I mean like we have a relationship. So it's like, of course. Right, 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 right. But the road, like I couldn't, it, it was difficult for me to get out of arenas. Like getting back to my hotel, I'd ha- I would have like security like sneaking me out the back, and I didn't anticipate that at all. I always have to tell her that she's Sue Bird. <laughs> I do want to uh, embarrass Megan a bit because oh, please. Please. the good and luck, I- by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so Sue is saying good luck there because Megan has been through some shit, especially recently. And if you don't remember how Megan waved goodbye to her athletic career, I should probably just recap how Sue did leave the Seattle Storm like Queen Elizabeth, all dignified and choreographed. But Megan, less than a year later, during her farewell retirement tour, ended up at the World Cup final. This was last August in the knockout round against Sweden. And everything came down to a shootout, came down to penalty kicks. And Megan, who was the, you know, best penalty shooter on the planet, arguably, did this. Rapino, right puts it over the bar. Megan had not missed a penalty in almost five years. Until that point. Until her last World Cup moment. And after the game, which the U.S. lost, obviously, she could not help but sound like this. I mean, this is like a sick joke. For me personally, I'm just like, this is dark comedy. I missed a penalty. But that dark comedy... 
it turned out, was just beginning. Because three months after that, last November now, Megan was back with her club team in Seattle, and they had made it all the way back to the National Women's Soccer League final, with a final championship on the line. And what happened there is kind of what I wanted to ask Megan about most of all. Even like what happened at the World Cup, I put into this a little bit yeah. because obviously I would have loved to go and win. And, you know, sports is sports. Like you don't get to you get to do everything up until you get on the field. And then like what what's going to happen is going to happen um, with my final game. I mean, I, I even said I just said the other day um, I was like, can you f- believe I tore my Achilles in my final game in the first three minutes. And there she goes down just unattested on the top of your screen off to a bright start and as you mentioned Jackie that would be devastating. And It's funny it's funny it's not but it's like dark humor I mean if you can't laugh at this like you know you can't laugh at anything like this is one of the risks I've dealt with a lot of Injury, I wish I would have had less, but I didn't. It's just the way it goes. Like, you you step on the field, there's a risk. Could have, anything could have happened. So this was really <laughs> unfortunate and, like, it's really sad. But also, I mean, I, I don't know. It's like, what are you going to do? I mean, it's like, what are you going to do? You know, now I'm rehabbing and it's giving me a little structure in my life and I'm, like, taking the best out of it that I can. But, yeah, it was a, it was a, <laughs> it was a tragic, <laughs> tragically comic ending, com- comedic ending. What was, Sue, what was going through your mind as you were watching this? Did you know immediately, well, yeah. Megan's going to find a way to laugh at this. She's going to see the dark uh, humor in this. Or were you feeling it as yourself, which was how, maybe? Yeah, no, I think I in the moment was just feeling the moment of it. I didn't, I wasn't thinking about the next day or week or month or how. It wasn't, it was just, well, actually, that's a, that's a little bit of a lie. I I knew it was an Achilles, Like pretty much right away, just like classic signs, the look back, nobody near her. There was somebody who texted me and said, and they're watching on TV, who it kind of threw me off because they were like, it looks like her knee. And I was like, really? It looks like her knee. But then there was something about the way she sat, grabbed her calf, and then kind of like sat back on her arms in a way of like defeat where I was like, oh, she knows. This mm. is Hercules. It's done. It's a wrap. And in that moment, I was just really sad for the moment. I was just really bummed in the moment, um, knowing that, yeah, that you didn't get to finish your final game in your final season. Just like really sad for that moment. And like I said, my one little lie is I did think like, oh man, this f- rehab is long. long. <laughs> this is a long rehab. Yeah. Um, so I did think that for you too. But I was in a sweep. Yeah. With her whole family. And so there was just a lot of, it was actually nice. There was a lot of commiserating. There were some tears. But very quickly, I think everybody turned to not celebrating that, but just like it turned into, okay, let's cheer on Seattle. Like we know Megan's okay. She's texted us from the locker room. Like we know she's okay. And now let's just kind of be in this moment. I am sad about it. Like I'm, I feel like I'm like getting emotional about it right now. Like it is sad. Like I wish that didn't happen like I'm just thinking about like my teammates coming over and like of course it's sad but it's also like I don't know it's kind of just like life you know we we want these like perfect stories and you know I'm like a controversial figure and having people low-key like f- celebrate it but then also like be so disingenuous about it that that part is kind of funny too i'm like wow you guys are in a special place in hell that you're um celebrating this i'm not going to that hell maybe pull a tissue out of your pocket yeah i pulled tissue out (laughs) where'd that come from it's winter in new york i'm so sensitive and it's just like (laughs) my eyes are running all the time my nose is running so i am sad about i was just thinking to myself like this is going to get clipped and people are going to be like oh so you think megan thinks it's funny that she did and it's like it's not funny but I also, this is how I, like, live my life. Yes. Like, there are so many more important things than this. And, like, of course it's sad. I don't think it takes anything away from my career. I don't Absolutely think missing not. that penalty takes anything in my career. It's just, Mm-mm. it's actually all part, part of, it. of it. And, like, if you don't, if you don't try, you're never going to do anything. Mm-hmm. What you said in the press conference, which got people, like, just, again, disingenuously furious. I'm not a religious person or anything. And if there was a God, like, this is proof that there isn't. This is up. Um, so yeah, it just it's just 
fucked up because <laughs> somebody needs to check on the Christians. They're not okay. They miss. <laughs> they also miss the whole joke. But well, okay, th that's the thing is that I'm like, you guys missed it. Don't act like a you're surprised by me like making this joke about right. what happened or you know finding a dig. I'm like, yeah, I want to find a funny like. Dig. I don't know. Am, yes. is, who's it at? God, myself, Wait, religion, but, but, the world. But, I don't know. I'm the like, dig it's just was funny. at yourself too because <laughs> yeah. it was. It's it, what it was. I don't think people appreciated this because everyone was deeply triggered, um, <laughs> religiously and otherwise. The dig is here is yet another athlete who thinks that proof of God is found in them winning. In oh. good shit happening. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, then obviously God does not exist. Exactly. That's the joke. Mm -hmm. That's and the for joke. you to say it at your last fucking press conference, I was like, this is brilliant. <laughs> and funny. and instead, uh, everyone got yeah, so bad. Yeah, it was a, it was a whole, so it was a thing. I, was like, <laughs> I really didn't expect it to be a thing. I have talked very openly about my belief or lack of belief, rather, in God. And I feel like that's, normal all of the other signals that i see from athletes is talking about their particular station of faith in life so why can't i talk about my particular station obviously i'm like doing that purposely and i'm like not literally saying that but i always found it like important for me to at least say that like i'm just gonna you know say i'm not gonna sort of dance around sports and faith is like so intertwined in this really bizarre way that does always have to do with like god was looking out for us today because we won yeah or it's a That's deeply right. selfish i don't know it's <laughs> a whole yeah it's like it's a whole thing and like that that also whatever. makes life hard for people who do not fall inside of the catechisms and rules of whatever church happens to be the dominant one in that locker room yeah so i didn't realize it was gonna i didn't even realize it was that big of a thing um because i don't re i don't get into my comments like that i don't even um use twitter anymore but then i you know started hearing about it from lots of different people i was like oh that's a they missed the joke i was more upset about that i'm like oh damn you didn't get credit for the joke damn it you missed the joke i just want the laughs, <laughs> um how has life besides physical therapy besides all that stuff for, for people who don't know how it tends to go for athletes, there's a very famous saying that an athlete dies twice. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Actual death, but mm -hmm. also retirement. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. You guys seem cool. Like, I, I see you guys, like, <laughs> hanging out, like, watching football games and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it seems like they're doing pretty well. But how how has that has that been, really? I think for me, um, I always knew that being an athlete just meant... Um, like there was a schedule, there was a regiment, there was the working out and the eating. And and it was how I always described it. It was just like something constantly running in the background, just a constant thought about, oh, God, I have a game tomorrow. I probably should get to sleep at this time. Oh, man, should I eat this? OK, what do I have day off. What am I going to do? It's like constant, constant, constant. And it impacts you. Right. And so I've definitely gone through like a detox period in terms of letting that go. Do you feel yourself sort of like instinctually acting as if you need to be somewhere and you a don't? A little bit. A little the bit. The phantom limb of yeah, practice. Yeah, I have a phantom limb. It's a phantom limb. Yeah, that's a, a great limb. way to say it. That is it. a perfect way of saying it. And I'm definitely, it's it's been it's been difficult. And I have like guilt connected to it, especially in the working out part of it. I think personally, since we're going deep here, yes. I think personally the last couple of years of my career, a lot of my basketball identity was was connected to the fact that I was older. I was now like 39, 40, 41, still able to play, still in this amazing shape. Like, wow, look at that. And I think a lot of my identity got wrapped up in that. So letting go of working out is letting go of that, like what, what I became connected to. So there's like a shedding that has to happen. So what do you do with the opportunity to actually be free of a grind for the first time in forever? I mean, I've had the luxury, obviously, of, of seeing you basically do everything just right in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> like, even just from the time we've met, I'm like, well, whatever the fuck you're doing, I'm going to be doing that, too. <laughs> uh, it's like I worked with Susan and, like, in our mm -hmm. retirement. And, you know, so I feel like I've had the, you know, the luxury of of having that in front of me. Um, I'm obviously very sort of new into it. But I think for me, I was 
very ready to be done. And that doesn't mean I don't miss it. And like, you know, I I watch games on TV and I'm like, oh, that'd be so fun. I feel like I wish my prime was now because I think the modern game better suits me as a player. Same and I me. spent a lot of my time, you know, playing left mid in a 4-4-2. And that's just a nightmare. So and I'm like, all the soccer people will know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> I think like physically, I was really ready, clearly, uh, tore my uh, Achilles in the last second that I ever played. So my body was like, okay, girl, we're done. But to your phantom limb point, I mm. find that like there is a voice in your head. Like this, athletes have a voice, and it's 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 not like a it's not mean, but like it's a it's a metronome. She's holding like, you to it. She's holding you to it. She's like, are you, you doing what you're <laughs> supposed to be doing? Like all of the time because it it all revolves around your playing and what mm -hmm. i've found is it's kind of weird like the voice is gone but i feel the absence of the voice and i'm, I'm mm. like oh i know what the voice would be saying but it's like not saying that so and then i'm like <laughs> what do i feel like i'm like i should be working out or working out more but like i don't want to and i'm tired so i'm not going to or like you know it's like oh we can go to Cabo <laughs> on a weekend if we want but that seems crazy to us like yeah. that seems like oh my god no like what do you what do you mean you can just like do things on the weekend like wait my 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 partner can show up and we can have sex tonight? yeah what <laughs> What are There's you no doing here? <laughs> yeah. This is not on the schedule. So I, I find that like I'm like balancing that. You, we have to like learn how to make choices for ourselves because to be honest, like our 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 whole lives really in sort of like a macro sense is is planned out. Our schedule is planned out, when your games are, when your vacation time is, even during the week. It's like, okay, I'm gonna play on a Saturday and I have Wednesday off. So that means Tuesday night I can go to dinner and have some wine. Sometimes I just go to her stuff and people are like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, plus one, Sue baby. Sue my fiance, <laughs> so I'm arm candy. <laughs> like, that's literally what I'm doing here and that's basically it. So, Can I ask the very rude question that obviously me, um, as America's foremost tabloid feelings reporter, <laughs> wants to know is, what's up with his wedding? What's up with that? What's <laughs> so, up with this wedding? What's going on? Where's my invitation? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The thirty mail? person. Out. Where's that? What's yeah. that at? Everything. I'm pretty sure all of our friends just want to party. What kind of cardstock yeah. you guys using on these invites? Yeah. <laughs> Probably just invites. Well, things people don't know. <laughs> Ready? Things people don't know. Please. The U.S. Women's National Team schedule is insane. Yeah. Like proper. It was, it was a lot. Now we're both done. Yeah. So that's why the question's coming up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know people are like, oh, we heard what you told a us. The voice has replaced the <laughs> yeah, other voice. Yeah, yeah. And it's my voice. It's a lot saying, of planning. It's, and when it's just are a you lot. Gonna do yeah. It. We're like, yeah. we just haven't gotten to that part yet. Yeah. <laughs> we would like to. Yeah. yeah. We had a, we had we a little, have like an idea. We more. had a hiccup, um, a, a, a fake, a fake news situation where we went to, um, two of my really good friends, um, Jess and Z, I played with them in huh. Seattle. They got married in Wales. We went. You dressed up. Yeah. Sue we wore an off-white um, blazer. Jacket. I wore a black one. It was my jacket. Yeah. And not like my outfit. Yeah. It was just like the jacket. And it was like we posted a picture. And it's funny the way people reached out about it because they were kind of like, congrats. Like <laughs> friends. Like, friends, close like, friends. Like, congrats. Like, I oh, had guys, no idea. Married, Basically, congrats. what they're saying was like, you guys went and did this without right. us? A passive aggressive period, yeah. maybe congrats, yeah. period. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> you'd be invited. I know. Like, you're, we're, not really gonna gonna we do, got what? we're not going to do the elope thing. <laughs> no. I just, I don't. I don't well, I personally way. don't want that. I, you don't want that? No. Okay, we don't want that. And so it, we do want the party that's going to be very fun, and we want to celebrate with all our people. So for everybody wondering, <laughs> you will be invited. You will be invited. Well, yeah, probably it not will everybody, happen. but <laughs> everybody Actually, everybody I wouldn't mind that. eloping, but then still having a wedding. Yeah. Like a, a, like yeah. a party. A party. Yeah, and then like showing up Better being like, savvy. we actually already married. Yeah. Pop the bottle. Yep. That, yep. I, could, that yeah. I could do. So there is no timeline. It's a lot of planning. Um... But it's going to happen eventually. Yeah. Can I ask an even more uh, I can't wait. invasive uh, question? Kids? Is it kids? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. kids. Yeah. You have all this time to contemplate it's, it's what kids. happens from here on out. I am fundamentally, as a friend and as, as the father the of father. a daughter. <laughs> a girl dad. As a girl dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, 
how do you think about that stuff now that you have the time to actually, for the first time, think about that stuff? I mean, you have a kid, right? You know how crazy they are. Yeah. It sounds pretty crazy. I, I, I'm, people are asking me all of the time. When's the second one? When's the second one? I'm like, yeah. guys, <laughs> just got we're, my, we're, we're just, just figuring out how to negotiate here. with a four-year-old <laughs> and not be um, yeah. outmanned here. Yeah. Um, so I am... I. It's hard. It's also all of here's my I know it's like wonderful, but all the cliches are are real mm -hmm. for me. I see it with my sister. I mean, you have it's like yeah. I have nieces. I see it. I see it. I froze my eggs. So that's like the I think the best part is that we don't feel a time crunch. Although, you know, you don't want to be like a super old parent. There's no one way to do it. I don't know that I want to be a super old parent. I'm already 43. So like, what's the I don't know if I've ever thought about this, but I'm like, what's the line? Sue Bird versus Time, yeah. the sequel. Yeah. The se yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Part two. Um, so yeah, so that's the good news is the option exists. I think as right as of right now, the answer is no. But it has come up a little bit more recently. We've yeah, talked about it, it a little bit it more. Just, I, I've always, I, I have never, a lot of respect for it. I'm just gonna, oh, sorry not to, I have so a lot much. of respect for it. And Incredible. because of that, I'm a little like, okay, I'm not doing this lightly. One million percent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a lot. Yeah, I, yeah. I never wanted to have kids while I was playing. I always just marvel at my teammates and athletes um, who do it. I'm just like, I don't, how do you, how did you do that? How are you doing that right now? Like, I'm so yeah, tired. Incredible. And it takes, it's just like moms who have kids and come back to sports are just superheroes superhero like i've seen it like live in all the different ways oh yeah from on field off field navigating parenting in that environment right like, serena williams candace parker all of these oof, just, examples it's mm -hmm. i don't get it incredible the utmost respects and i just was like oh my god i could never do that i and never wanted to and then i also don't want them like right now i just i'm like i just got to my freedom so you're not it, giving that up just yet no <laughs> 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 for that cute little at the end of every episode of Pablo Torre finds out we establish what it is that we found out today oh okay. um, I found out a lot about you guys but I'm curious what you guys have found out talking through um, with me uh, your lives in a way that feels a bit like part couples counseling although you guys don't need it and part exit interview um, from your previous life, which is not how I, I didn't want this to be super dramatic, <laughs> but I appreciate that we've got into some really deep things. Yeah. So what did you guys find out about, about yourselves today? That's actually the first time I've really talked about the fear that I think I felt as a young professional using that word, mm. like mm. afraid. Yeah. I haven't really just talked about it that way it just came to me and i said it. i did think that too while you were talking i was like oh they yeah, just never really, said it i've never said it that way yeah yeah it was always kind of like the way you talked about it was like just like it was fine i didn't really you know think about it that much and then you started dating like the gayest person in the world so it was like yeah my sister <laughs> macaulay like, culkin over here oh my god it was so Tell funny i mean your shout out boyfriend. to that mean person who said <laughs> that macaulay culkin that was funny that was funny but <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so that's definitely something I guess I learned. What I found out is that um, you guys are enjoying freedom. Yeah, very much. Yeah, it's nice. I think I like continue to find out that I was very ready to move into like a different phase of life. But I think just like freeing up all this space is like being very curious about other things and wanting to spend my time doing other things other than just like talking about myself or ourselves. No, no, I was just going to say, you were saying, yeah, I love this freedom of retirement. And I'm like, and I'm Tom Hanks from Castaway. <laughs> where I feel like I'm still like, <laughs> yeah, I'm you're still laying on the floor with my flashlight. Can I go back to the island? It was comfortable. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. that's yeah. been like my experience though. Just kind of leaving this other life that I lived for so long got comfortable in. Like, oh, there's a whole world out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Megan, Sue, thank you for uh, genuinely sharing more of yourselves than I have any right to know and uh, allowing me to, uh, you know, ask about your sex life. That was. Yeah, no, we started was... we started hot yeah. and heavy. Yeah, we, we, we got in there. We started hot and heavy. Had to keep it going. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy like, Valentine's likewise. Day. Likewise. Will you thank be my you. Valentine? Yeah, I'll be your Valentine, babe. Of course. <laughs> 
for more Sue Bird, by the way, keep an eye out for this upcoming documentary titled Sue Bird in the Clutch, which just premiered at Sundance and is headed to a streaming service near you. This has been Pablo Torre Finds Out, a Meadowlark Media production. And I'll talk to you next time.